the first thing I want to point out here is that there's a distinguishment between there's, there's really two steps to getting documents into Nextpoint for review. The first step is going to be uploading them, and the second step is going to be importing them. So let's let's quickly mark what that distinguishment is, like the differences there. And so what I'm going to do is when I click into the data tab, it takes me to the first step of getting documents in. So I'm going to I'm going to do that in my blank database, and I'm going to do it in my full flush, fully flushed out database. So you'll see this is what we call our file room. And essentially it is a storage unit for your data. We can see this is an empty one, and this is what more of a fully flushed out one looks like. And what we're doing here, you can view this as like your storage unit for your data. We're taking those documents for, more, for wherever they're locally stored. So let's say your local computer, your hard drive, um, wherever that those where wherever those documents are, getting them from there up into the cloud backed by Amazon S3. So what we're doing here is getting them uploaded. It's kind of like building a bridge from wherever they are and getting them into the cloud into those virtual remote servers. And there's three different ways that we can go about getting them in here. This again, it's a storage unit. This isn't where the documents are gonna be actually viewed. It's just gonna be like, okay, these are in the cloud now, ready to be used. We can kind of move from there. Um, but the three ways that we can go about getting them into the cloud and into your file room, into your storage unit is gonna be kind of either the drag and drop traditional that you're accustomed to. Um, this is my personal favorite. So like if you have your finder, you can go ahead and take an entire folder so like, um, let's go with um, this production. I could go ahead, grab this, drag it over and just drop it in here and it will start to upload, go through that upload process. And the cool thing about that is that if you grab that folder, it will maintain that folder integrity, that folder structure that you have set up on your local computer. So that let's go give you an example, like loose docs, this is split up when I click into it into client A documents and client B documents. And then you can click in and then see these are the actual client A documents. So it will maintain that folder structure that you had on your local computer. And it's also important to make sure that you're organizing yourself from the start and getting things organized into folders when you upload them into the file room. Because if you just have a bunch of documents, so like again, if I were to go to my file room or to my finder, and I were to just grab all of these documents, I just grab all these documents and then drag them over and then drop them in here. What it's gonna look like is down here, you'll see it's just a bunch of loose documents. And instead of being able to import all 220 documents at once from this folder, I have to go and pick and choose these documents to import them, or I could hit select all and then import them. But I won't know what I have and what I have not already imported if I do it this way and I have multiple iterations of documents coming into my file room. So highly recommend getting organized from the start, getting those base folders in there um, when you are going to import. So I'm gonna go ahead and select none. Um, so that is the way that I prefer to get documents into the file room. The second thing is gonna be, you could go ahead and upload files from here and then pick and choose from your local computer here and then upload them that way. So those are the two ways you can get them uploaded. If you have them stored on your local computer, you have them in your possession. If you don't have them in your possession, however, there's a third way that you can get them. So like you need to request these from um, opposing counsel or from your client. You can go ahead and click on request files, type in that person's name, give their email address, type in the folder that you want them to drop it in. So maybe like client name Dropbox or something like that. And then type in a nice little message to them so that they know that this isn't a phishing scam, uh, saying something along the lines of, per our conversation, could you please drop these into, um, drop those desired documents into this link. And what it's gonna do is when you hit request files, it will give them five days to access an encrypted link that's sent to their email address that will take them to, once they confirm their identity, it will take them to 
something that looks like your file room. And the reason I say it looks like your file room is because even though we have all of this information already in here, they're only gonna see the ability to drag and drop or upload files in there. And the reason for that is, I mean, pretty, pretty obvious. You wouldn't want, for security purposes, you wouldn't want to have anyone have access to your file room that does not already have access to your database. So they'll have the, the functionalities of the file room, but uh, they won't have access to anything in it. And once they start dragging and dropping stuff in, it will send you a push notification email letting you know that so-and-so has started dropping documents in there. So you can expect um, those uploads to be in there relatively soon. Um, so those are the three ways that you can go about getting documents into the file room. Um, one of the things that I like to point out here, you've got some best practices over here to the right of how to use the file room correctly. Again, um, we are building that bridge from where those documents are locally stored to the cloud. And so what we wanna do is make sure that we do not interrupt or uh, destroy that bridge while those documents are in transit. So while these uploads are occurring, there's some best practices. Make sure that we're not closing the tab, we're not closing the browser, we aren't closing our computer, there, we have stable Wi-Fi or internet connection throughout the entire process until that is complete. Um, because otherwise, that's if you do any of those, it's gonna be like burning the bridge between um, your computer and the cloud. And so some things to help with that, whenever you log in, I highly recommend clicking on the disable session expiration button that's just beneath your um, password. It's a nice little checkbox where you could say, I don't want to be logged out. Um, I like doing that just as a best practice so that if I'm even if I'm going in and reviewing, I don't get unceremoniously booted out. Um, I like to keep my place. And so I don't wanna get kicked out of the system. So I just always click on disable session expiration. This one's pretty easy. Make sure you're using Chrome, Firefox, or Safari. Essentially, just don't use Internet Explorer. Um, maximum size for a single upload is recommended at 20 gigabytes. That can be circumnavigated. It's not a rule. It's a recommendation to make sure that you are not having any failed uploads. But certainly, I've seen larger than 20 gigabytes being uploaded at a time. We're going to want to unzip any documents, any zip folders, with the exception of PSTs and MBoxes. Um, cause those are going to be recognized as zip folders and then unzipped upon import based on the type of, as, as, as we go through these imports, you'll see what that looks like. Um, but if you have just zipped, zipped, um, files that have like multiple files like that, that those loose documents that we were talking about, those are all going to want to be unzipped so that we can, um, read what's in there before they are uploaded in there. Have stable internet connection. Don't close the browser. Again, all, all that is best practice for getting things into the file room. Once you have them here, we are now ready to start that import process. 